Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church, Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office selection. I thought today we'd take a look at St. Matthew's Gospel. I said, wait a second, St. Matthew's Gospel? We were working through another gospel, I thought. Well, today's an ember day. Uh, today is one of the days four times a year where we pray for the ordained ministry of the church as well as for lay ministries in the church. Uh, and so the lessons do take a quick little detour uh, and have to do with ministry. Uh, it's also St. David's Day today. So we give thanks to Almighty God for the patron saint of Wales. Uh, and we give thanks to our members here at St. John's, including Father Bedford and Father or uh, Dr. Hugh Lewis, uh, who are of Welsh origin. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse number 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then he saith thee to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. And he arose and departed to his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with his disciples. When the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole, whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what it meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay, so as we mentioned, these lessons have to do with um, uh, with the Ember Days, uh, which have to do with ministry. So we, we hear that one of the vital aspects of ministry for the church is the reconciliation of fallen humanity, fallen mankind, fallen individuals affected by sin, reconciliation between God and man. And that's done through the forgiveness of sins. The ministry of reconciliation is the assurance of the forgiveness of sins. And so we hear in the first part where Jesus says to the man who's sick of the palsy, your sins are forgiven you. And, and in their minds, the scribes are saying, well, this is a blasphemy. And of course, that's a grievous sin to say that Jesus is blaspheming. He can't blaspheme against himself because he's God, right? But just to show them that in fact, he can do this Right? Only God can forgive sins. Well, guess what? He's God. And so he forgives the man's sins and just orders him to get up and walk. Right? So we, we just, maybe we take for granted the forgiveness of sins. But it was a scandal to say that your skin, sins are forgiven. It was a scandal during the time that Jesus walked on the earth as a human being before the resurrection. So it was really quite scandalous. But then he turns around and says, and once again, he scandalizes this time the Pharisees, the scribes pronounce the Pharisees because Jesus is eating with tax collectors and sinners. And once again, the ministry of the church is to reach out to the fallen, to the lapsed, to those who are outside of the church and to bring them in, right? To have fellowship with them, not on their terms, but to bring them back into relationship with God, ultimately through Jesus Christ. So this is about the ministry of the church. We do have Mass today at 12.15, uh, as well as evening prayer at 4 o'clock, and I hope that you can join us as the church exercises a part of her ministry, the offering of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, better known as the Holy Communion. And God willing, we'll see you in church.